Alright guys, so just wanted to show you a little update. Did a couple things since Christmas, starting with I am Stig. We got matching decals on both sides. You can see the other one through the window. No, you can't. Not really. Um, we got some paint going on. The car seat anchor points are now red instead of black. Thought those were pretty cool. And Autobot logo. This is all stuff that I kind of got for Christmas and wanted to do. Um, well, not that, but there's the other logo. Go inside for a sec. Take that out. So, this is what color they are normally black. I painted them red. So, this is just like three layers. No, I did a layer of primer, three layers of red spray paint, and then three layers of clear coat. And uh, that's the result. It looks pretty good. Just kind of adds something different. Adds a little bit of color to the car. I want to do some other stuff in the car that same color. I just wanted to see how it looked. So uh, that's it. That's my little update. Uh, throw this on with the Versa blog. All right, so we're gonna go for a little drive now. I gotta get some gas, so we'll go for a drive and um, we'll see how this camera mount is doing. Let's first see if I have any cash. We're just going to creep down the street. I do have cash. So we're going to get gas. Alright. So. I found out that the camera mount was a little loose. And I think that's what's been this rattling in all of these videos. And if you've watched the videos, it's really, really annoying when I'm talking and there's a stupid rattle. So I think it's fixed now, but we're going to see. Um, I think what it was is one of the bolts was a little loose. There was a washer that was loose, and the washer is what was rattling. Every little bump we hit or just moving, the vibration from the car moving was enough. So I'll start talking about um, today's Versa vlog topic, and that is cold weather and your car, how it affects your car. There's a couple things that you need to be not concerned about. A couple things you should know about when you're driving in the cold. Um, everything from your engine to your stereo is affected by the cold. So we'll start off with your engine. Um, obviously when it's cold, it starts a little harder. Your, um, your battery is at a decreased capacity in the cold. It doesn't uh, have as much juice to put out. About the time I get to go. So that's the first thing. Your battery won't have as many amps to start the car because it's cold. That's why when you buy a battery it has cranky amps and it has cold cranky amps. It's not just, you know, for shits and giggles. There's a reason it's there. So, I still hear a highly annoying. Anyways, damn it, I didn't fix it. Well, we'll continue with this video anyways. So, your battery doesn't start as well when it's cold. Um, your engine, when it's cold, it might have a little hard start, um, and it has to get the oil warmed up before it can really do anything. So, some people let their car sit and idle in the driveway, let it warm up, get it up to optimum temperature, so it can operate at its top. I usually don't, because my commute is so short, I don't want to sit, have my car sit there. It's so cold, it's like 10 degrees this morning, less than 10 degrees, it's like 5. It's so cold, and it takes so long to warm up, that by the time my car is warmed up, I could already be at work. <laughs> So I usually just don't bother. Uh, I'm not going to waste the time to let my, and waste the gas. Gas is expensive. I don't want to waste 10 minutes worth of idling 
just so I can have a warm ride to work. And maybe it is so that the car is operating at its optimal temperature, but maybe it's just me. I don't know. I've never had real issues with it, so for now, I'm not worried about it. Uh, another thing that's affected by the cold is your stereo. You might notice the display is a little slow when it's cold out. It depends on what kind of display you have. Some displays are cold, or uh, they're slow when it's cold out. Excuse me. Um, my stereo is a little bit. Like right now, it'll go fine. But when I first started this morning, it was slow. The display would take a second to uh, change in between songs and stuff. And then your subwoofers and your speakers, these are also affected by the cold. A little chemistry lesson here. What happens when rubber gets cold? Well, it stiffens. What happens when it gets hot? It rubberized and loose. Not loose, but you know what I meant. Stretchy. So, when it's cold out, your subwoofer isn't going to perform at optimal because it can't. Especially if you have, maybe not if you have a paper cold or a foam surround. Still, when it's cold out, your electronic gear is not going to be at its best. There's kind of an optimal range for electronics. Because you don't want them to overheat, but you don't want them to be over cold. So you got to find the balance. So as far as that goes, if it's early morning and it's cold out, and you want to run your sub, my sub's off right now. Um, you want to run it and it's cold, you live in a cold area, just let it warm up a little bit. Start quiet, and then build your way up, and you can crank it if it's warmed up. But don't crank it from the get-go because you're going to do something bad. It's not going to be good. So I think that's just about everything I have on uh, cold weather in your car. If there's anything that I said that was wrong, feel free to correct me. I don't mind if you correct me. Just do it nicely. And uh, I guess that's it for now. So I'll talk to you guys later. I think I may have actually fixed that rattle. I haven't heard it for a while, so maybe that's good.